Centre for Climate Repair joins me now from Greece. Good to see you, sir. Grateful for your time. Look, Rishi Sunak's argument is basically this, that even after net zero, there will be a requirement for oil and gas, and it is better to get that from your domestic supply, if you can, rather than put your hand into strategic partners. Which is, of course, a complete nonsense. Uh, we, we've been shifting our economy away from a, the dependence on fossil fuels for the last 20 years. And we've been quite successful in doing that, uh, reducing our emissions overall since 1990 by nearly 45 percent. And so what well, if, so, for example, our electricity, something like 40 percent of our electricity comes from just offshore wind. We have been working very hard to see that we can move all the way away from fossil fuels. At the moment, globally speaking, we are emitting more than 40 billion tons of carbon dioxide equivalent per annum. The net result is that compared with the pre-industrial level, carbon dioxide pre-industrially was at about 270 parts per million. We're now well over 500 parts per million. And since we know the greenhouse gases act as a kind of blanket over the earth, we've now put a second blanket over the earth. It's bound to lead to unbearably high temperatures. So, so I think, why, why do you think he's doing it? Well, I mean, he's got all these statistics. He has uh, the access to, to your successors and, and others. Why do you think the British government would willingly do this then? There's only one possible reason to give this. I, I mean, I've, I've called for the science advice that lies behind what he's talking about. And, of course, there is no response to that. The British public would surely see this as a desperate act of electioneering, putting our future at serious risk in order that he might gain a few more votes at the general election that will take place next year. There is no doubt in my mind, and I think in many, many people's minds, that that's what underlies this. We're looking at a very but, cynical charge from our prime minister. But, but surely he, that's a double-edged sword in a sense, because there's an entire younger generation that will say, uh, surely, no, you've got to put it wrong. You've got to put the climate first and you fail to do that. So balancing that, I mean, that, that the cynicism of which you talk about could backfire on him. It will, I believe, backfire on him. Um, I don't believe the British public are ready to go down this route. We, we have had, since 2008, we've had an all-party agreement on climate action. Parties of whatever colour that have come in since that period of time, when Labour was in government and I was the chief scientific advisor, Parties of whatever colour have followed the, uh, not the command, but have followed the advice of the Climate Change Committee of Parliament set up under that act in 2008. And suddenly we now have a Prime Minister breaking away from that. We all know that the Conservative government is very unpopular in the, amongst the British people. I do see this as a desperate action to try and recover the popularity. What we see is pictures of the Prime Minister in cars saying, I'm the man who's behind supporting car drivers. Incredible, incredible. We, I don't believe that the British public will not see through this. Sir David King, thank you, sir. We'll talk more about it. I'm grateful for your time tonight. Enjoy Greece. Thank you, sir.